Welcome, hello, hello, dear listener. Another episode of Two Debate. I always say the same thing in the beginning, right? I, I should, I should, I should change the game for some some What other else phrase. What do you want to say? Do you want to? You know, we, we can change it upside down. We can say, "Hey, goodbye, everyone," <laughs> and I just re do it in reverse. We start uh, with a bonjour, with the animal, madame, and monsieur. How about that? Oh, you want to do it in French? That's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. You debate in French, I debate in German, and our listeners can sort it out. Let me start over. Sebastian, you're in Singapore right now, as I know. How, on a level from one to ten, how much Christmas is outside your door if you if you go uh, browsing around? Surprisingly, it's I would say it's a nine because they they put fake snow. <laughs> <laughs> There's fake snow with foam. I am not even uh, joking. You, you have been to Singapore, I, I remember, uh, with your family. So you may remember in the gardens by the bay, there are the super tree, the super tree grove. So during Christmas, and a few years ago it was free, now you, now you have to pay for it. But they put these tons of lights and like Christmas decoration and even foam to simulate snow. So actually it's a bit overblown it's a bit exaggerated to be very honest it feels very much like christmas in a weird place except it's raining every freaking day i mean uh, if you, been here. there are those those uh, botanic gardens in the gardens by the bay and one of those halls i remember when we were there we walked in there and it was like cooled down to let's say i guess a chilly 10 degrees it was pretty cold in there And they had like an ice skating rig and, uh, you know, it also it feels weird if you're in Singapore and you walk into a botanic garden um, building type of thing and all of a sudden you're surrounded by your home plants. Like uh, it, it felt very weird to walk in there and see German trees and, and the kind of flowers that you would see at home. That felt a little bit foreign to me. But yeah, I, I remember I remember that uh, like Christmas trees everywhere. And what what also puzzled me, I remember that we saw uh, um, even a Santa Claus dressed kind of a person somewhere. And I mean, it has 40 centigrees. That's like, I don't know, a million Kelvin. I don't know how to translate it. It's pretty hot, actually. And sitting in that full dress somewhere in, in the middle of, uh, of Asia, it's, it, felt, it felt weird to me, yeah. <laughs> and now I wonder how you're going to make a transition. Why me? Why don't you pick up the the lead and <laughs> make a transition? You, you went to Singapore all the way. Although, although here's a transition for you. Oh, now we, what now happened we. in Singapore? It was in June of last year, if I'm not mistaken, right? June 2018. Do you uh, remember? Mm, in Singapore, mm, high profile event, international event. Oh, oh yeah, ah, I remember. Look at this that, transition. That's when that's when Trump finally solved the nuclear threat from North Korea, right? Exactly. That's when the entire world started feeling peace at peace, and yeah, and and everyone was happy around the planet. Which is, which is why it, it is ridiculous that people want to impeach him right now. He did so it? much for the world. Enough is enough, Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the the, the that, motion today. We are so the graceful. The motion today is enough is enough. Trump should be kicked out from office, and we have flipped the coin as usual. Uh, Derek, you'll be against the motion. You'll be defending Trump. Uh, he has many lawyers, but I'm sure you're the best lawyer of them all uh, to defend Trump. And that will be for his impeachment and for him to be kicked out. That's an important. So let's do this. That's an important distinction. I want to say here, I'm not going to defend Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I will make a case right. against impeachment. Let's That's a, a slightly different ball game here. All right, let's see if you stick to the to, to, to the motion. Yeah. So and if you're not, you'll be disqualified and kicked out from this um, from podcast. Office. That's fine with I'm, me. I'm, I'm impeached from podcast. Okay. Impeached from any podcast forever. Ever, ever. Ever, 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 ever? <laughs> <laughs> enough is enough is enough. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. All right. Let's get started. You got two minutes to listen to me. For once, I am first. Okay. Let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues for the motion. Not a single day passes that our dear friend or non-friend Trump is making an even bigger fool of himself. But being a fool would be okay. It would be okay if he were not criminal and, and if he were just a little bit funny. Unfortunately, He is both unethical and not funny at all. 
You see, if there was just a little bit of self-deprecation, it would kick up the dust. We'd have a good laugh, and then he can gently go away after his term. But unfortunately, Trump is rude and unapologetic. He does not say sorry ever. He lies. He contradicts himself. He knows very little about how to govern and engages in criminal behavior. Uh, so he's very obviously unfit for the president's office. And this has nothing to do, by the way, this has nothing to do with him having won the elections in 2016. He did win the elections, no question about that. But sometimes elected people screw up, and Trump screw, screwed up big time with the Russians, with the, with, the, with the Ukrainians, with women, and the way he talks about them and treats them. Seriously. He has damaged and permanently damaged the way democracy works in the US. It was already flawed. He didn't make it flaw in the, in the first place, but he took it to another level. And another example, and I'll close off with this in my initial, initial remarks here, of this permanent uh, damage that he's caused to democracy in the US is how Republicans behind him are blindly defending him. It especially puts in a stark light those Republicans who are, who are at risk of losing their seat in upcoming elections and just defend him even more blindly. And this, I think, is a very telling sign of a democracy going completely wrong and manipulated by someone who's completely unfit for office. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. Seriously, all it takes to protect someone from impeachment is if they are just funny? That was that, that surely has been a very French perspective on the world of politics, right? If it's at least entertaining, then we can keep it in the office. I'm not sure. I think Trump makes for a very entertaining president. Surely I haven't followed uh, US politics as closely as the past years. It was much more boring under Obama, I can give you that. Uh, but uh, yeah... Um, maybe maybe perspectives change. Now, the motion we are debating today is whether or not Trump should be impeached. And I have to say up front, I'm personally not in Trump camp. So if you hope that I defend Trump for you, that's not going to happen. What I will make a case for, though, is that right now, the worst thing that can happen is an impeachment of Trump. I personally think it's the wrong time. Uh, it may be the right reasons, but it should have happened much, much earlier to be really effective. And uh, my main main argument here is going to be what happens if uh, they impeach Trump and he gets elected like three months later? What will that do to the tool of impeachment? What will that do to the entire process? What will that do to an already unleashed president? I mean, to to Republicans, you could even argue that Trump is quite effective. I mean, he's doing crazy things, but at least he follows through with what he said he would do. So overall, I don't think that uh, the, the board is undivided. There are people that claim that Trump is an effective president, that the kind of things he does, other presidents have done as well, just not as open and as blunt as he was doing it. But well... They did it nonetheless. Uh, many people don't uh, understand the intricate discussions around influencing foreign governments and election meddling and all that anyway, and don't care, frankly. Who cares in the US about uh, the Ukraine to start with? So overall, I think it's the wrong time, it's the wrong tool to do the right thing. We should have done that very much earlier. It didn't happen, so now it shouldn't happen. <laughs> And now on to Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. I like your argument, uh, actually, uh, and I'm not being sarcastic here, um, but I, I, it made me think about a few examples from history. Let's talk about whether presidents should be entertaining or funny. I'm not saying they should be, but I actually meant it, uh, and I didn't think further until you brought it up because I, I took it as, a, as a, an example. Uh, and I have three examples in mind. One is in Ukraine, actually. Uh, Zelensky, the current president, is or was a comedian. He had no experience in politics. Right? He was elected because he went for it and got elected. He's a comedian at heart and by profession. Uh, Ronald Reagan was an actor, as far as I know. Uh, so he also became president. And in France, we had uh, a president called Jacques Chirac in the, in the 90s and early, early 2000s. He died a few weeks ago. Same thing. He didn't do much, to be honest, but he was kind of entertaining. Uh, 
So I don't think this is necessarily a problem because it can have it can have a soothing function in some cases. Such such presidents can be a force of stability. Maybe they don't do much politically, but they represent the country and they're not、uh, damaging democracy as such. You mentioned afterwards, and that's also an interesting argument. It should have happened earlier. What if he gets reelected? Well, if he gets reelected, that's democracy. It doesn't change anything. It does not change anything to the fact that impeachment in this case is to be very clear that quid pro quo or bribery are not something that we allow. At least not that the, what the U.S. democracy allows for its president. So if he gets reelected, so be it. Right? He will win the next election, and if he does commit new crimes, he will be or hope. Hopefully, should be impeached again. I don't think one changes the other; they're mutually non-exclusive. Who cares about Ukraine? Well, actually, that's the point, right? I think the the problem with, with, which is happening now, the division which exists between Republicans and Democrats, and maybe what's happening in the general public, is that indeed it, maybe one side is trying to make it pretend, just like you are, that it's it's irrelevant, that it does not matter. It should matter. It should matter how you want to、um, have a well-functioning democracy, and maybe Ukraine sounds far. Maybe Afghanistan sounds far. Maybe Iraq sounded far in 2003 when the U.S. decided to invade Iraq on lies. Right when Colin Powell went to the U.N. and pretending、uh, that there were nuclear facilities and there was, you know, proof of it, that was a lie, and everyone knows it today. So I think there is a point here, even though it may sound very far and not interesting, and nobody speaks Ukrainian, and Zelensky, nobody knows how to spell that name. Uh, well, it does matter to how your democracy functions at home. Finally,、uh, and this is maybe a, it will sound like a joke, but actually, I'm not even sure it is a joke. In a way, I'm sure that Trump wants impeachment. I think he could then brag to be the first president of the 21st century to be impeached and kicked out of office. Yes, I am first. He he would be able to scream uh, that. Uh, any number of consp- conspiracy theories about the deep state removing him from office. And let's imagine for a second this appealing image for a second: a Donald Trump on a rocking chair in his retirement home in Florida. Sorry, sorry, I meant in his golf course, blabbing to himself that this is all fake news. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fake news. It's CNN fake news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he'd love it, except that nobody would ever pay attention to him again. Imagine that picture. Now it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear it. I was confused here for a second, because that Trump wants to be impeached. He can then claim the deep state removed him from office, and it all has been a huge conspiracy, and maybe even relative forces again. That sounds very much like an argument against impeachment to me. I'm 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 very sorry, Sebastian, but it feel it feels to me very much like it is the wrong time and the wrong occasion. You said. Yeah, if he gets reelected, then that's democracy. And if he keeps doing,、uh, keeps committing crime, then he will be impeached again. Well, I don't think that would happen. Why? Because it's a democracy after all. If he gets impeached now and then reelected, in a sense, the electorate would then have decided with a ballot that they don't care about Trump committing those crimes, and therefore, impeachment wouldn't happen a second time. I mean, there is such a long list of things that Trump did and admitted to. It's not even a secret. I mean, he's the he's the leaker in chief in that White House.、Uh, you, you just have to put a a microphone in front of him、uh, shortly before he boards、uh, Marine One, and he will keep shouting all the secrets into your microphone anyway. Despite the fact that he keeps saying everything is fake news and it's not true, but he's the first one to admit to a microphone that he did things. There is such an amazingly long list of things I would consider unacceptable for. Any leader of a of a big democracy, and he gets away for with,、um, with it for what not now three years, like it's not that there is a shortage of crimes. There seem to be, have been a shortage of will to impeach and to,、uh, to start with. So doing it now is the riskiest of all options. They should have done it like a year or two years ago. The fact that they waited for so long to to actually act makes it weaker. 
if he gets re-elected, that basically means he's re-elected despite all the crimes that he did. And it's not the first one where this happens. If you look around, there are other world leaders in democracies that committed crimes that were at sometimes even discussed in court and they got re-elected in immunity uh, um, for, their, for the position they are in. So I don't think Trump would be the first one that to happen. Impeachment right now is the wrong thing. Imagine how much better it would be if everybody would double down on actually beating him in the election. Oh, 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 I wish. America, please do not elect the guy um, for the next term. If he would be a one-term president and then is convicted uh, in court for all the crimes that he did, that would be much a stronger signal. Instead of giving him all the reasons he needs to scream about the deep spe uh, state, maybe being re-elected because his supporters rally to defend him and all the spineless Republicans right now that blindly follow him because they are scared they might lose power. If all this would fall down, that would be so much a better outcome. No, uh, we shouldn't. We sh uh, impeachment is the wrong tool at the wrong time right now. <laughs> Final statements. Sebastian goes first. As I said, I, I like your arguments. You know, they're compelling. Um, and and we probably agree here that, that Trump, unfortunately, is a liar, has had criminal behavior. At least this is what the reports have shown. But I think the confusion here is twofold. One, there's confusion between not caring and applying the rule of law. The second confusion is between elections and running for elections and applying the rule of law. In both cases, it's not because people don't care and may re-elect uh, corrupt politicians. This has happened and this will happen again. People with past convictions are not, in most cases, not allowed and are not disallowed from running again for elections uh, pending whatever uh, convictions they have. Likewise, elections have nothing to do with applying rule of law. Right? I know it may sound uh, a strange or not the right moment, but applying the rule of law is to show that you have counterpowers and that they work. And yeah, sometimes it's not the best timing, but you don't choose when you can have a process in place. In this case, it's about impeachment, so it's, I believe it's not a judiciary process, it's a legislative process since it goes to Congress and then to the Senate. So it's not actual judges who actually to do that. Uh, but it's it's one illustration of the counterpower, right? The the legislative body is a counterpower to the president, and just as judges can be another counterpower, and in some countries you also consider the media as yet another unofficial counterpower. And I think it's very important to establish these counterpowers as much as independent as possible, and to show whatever the timing, and it may not be the best timing politically, but to actually have the the right people in place and the people who are criminal just out of the office they're in. Dirk. To sum up, I think Trump is a joke of a president. He is kind of entertaining to some people and scary to others. That probably is true for every kind of president. He came in power despite his flaws. He committed crimes he even admitted to. The list of tax frauds that are almost proven and that would be followed through as soon as he leaves office is impressively long by now. So I do think right now, while he is president, he is in fact above the law. And the impeachment is not a process that enforces the law. The impeachment is a political spectacle. And we will see this playing out as such. There will be not a Republican resurgence that falls into line with the, Democ uh, with the Democrats to impeach Trump. It will just not happen because this is not about values, this is not about moral, this is not about rule of law, this is about power. And right this moment, impeachment is a tool that's a pretty weak tool already and if he would be impeached and re-elected right afterwards, that would be even more damaging. So I think we should not impeach, uh, impeach him. Actually, we should have all attention paid to defend him in an election and then have him a one-term presidency and afterwards cra the law cracking down on him. That would be so satisfying to see. That's it. Thanks for the debate. Uh, interesting perspective. Uh, I did not expect you to adopt that stance, but I, I respect it because as we've always try to do in our debates is to really defend something that we 
can believe in, that it's not going against, you know, our fundamental values. So you didn't, you didn't try to defend Trump. So well done. Good job uh, coming with a perspective that does not defend Trump, but also does not defend uh, impeachment. Uh, here's an interesting element. I would love to hear... I, I still struggle to hear somebody believably arguing a Republican side of that argument. So when I when I watch the hearings for the impeachment, for instance, or the statements the Republicans make, I'm puzzled by this because they seem they seem to not they seem to not even touch on the fact that Trump openly and visibly keeps committing misconduct. They are not they are not they are not touching this. And it puzzles me because I always thought of Republicans as these principled, black-white kind of people that hold standing up for what is right and making the tough call but sticking with it, uh, one of their main principles. Right now, uh, the, what it goes to show is as soon as you're, as you're in power, you do whatever it takes to keep that power. And it's so, it's so embarrassing to watch. Because it's like, uh, I, I wonder in what universe is actually what Trump is doing okay. And I would love, because I also assume, I suspect that this to a large degree is my European liberal bias at play as well. So I wonder if I would have a smart conservative Republican in front of me making a case why the things Trump was doing were right. That would be an interesting debate as well. I think that's a deba debate you and I, we actually cannot have. That's a, that's a fair point. Um I'm, I'm even wondering if the debate is actually possible, considering the nature of the facts in this case. I mean, it does, everything we're reading does seem much, much more obvious than Watergate, as some, some Democrats have, have mentioned, I think, I think over the past few days. Uh, it, interesting, the, the perspective you bring up is the one that the Democrats were considering for a long time, right? If I'm not mistaken, Nancy Pelosi, the Congress majority leader, Democrat, uh, had try to keep her troops in rank by telling them let's not go for impeachment just yet like last year and two years ago right let's you know it's not strong enough it's not great politically so yeah the debate was certainly going on and they said oh this time is just too much but you have a good point right politically it may actually not serve anyone because it seems the public opinion is not really changing anything in terms of you know like the mind's already set in terms of whether he's guilty or not. And it seems to be so polarized yet again that it seems to uh, defeat its purpose. Uh, I stick by what I said. I do think you know the rule of law is irrespective of the political agenda. It may be, it may be a disaster, uh, but respecting the law and trying to enforce it uh, and, and try to do that irrespective of the political agenda, I think is, is the morally good thing to do. It may not be the smart thing to do politically, but it's morally good to enforce it. Even if it's like at the cost of losing the elections against Trump. Uh, I would say, hey, I'd rather go for four years again, of yet again Trump, but actually stick to my principles and, ho and hoping that at some point the public will see it and say, you know what? Yeah, we took a conscious risk. We realize it's not very popular. We know we're going to get defeated with the Senate. We, probably, we may lose the elections, although we're going to try everything to do to win them. But we stick by our principles. I'd love to hear something like this. I think that would be like very emotionally appealing, by the way. I think I this is basically. I, the, it. I think it's basically the messaging of the Democrats, right? To be fair, um, I think at this point Nancy Pelosi had no choice, or the Democrats had no choice, than to start impeachment. I mean, when do you start impeachment if not when you catch your president trying to get a foreign power to bring you everything you need to win your election at home? This is like. Uh, like there was no way not to impeach so I give them that or not to start impeachment proceedings I would just say maybe they should have started much earlier I think the timing is very unfortunate the timing is really bad but uh, uh, aside from that it is as, uh, as you say it is it is a uh, it is something that I sympathize with to say hey okay we stick to principles the question though is And that's, that's about impeachment in general. We've seen this playing out the other way around. Clinton, uh, remembering that, that we looked at those impeachment proceedings and said, hey, come on, you're trying to remove a president from power because he had an affair with his intern? Are you kidding us? 
If you listen to the details and you read it up, it looks pretty sad that he was a sexual predator, like a serious sexual predator, that there were really substantial claims that he was morally, uh, let's say, at least problematic. And back then, the, the Republicans tried to go through with impeachment and the Democrats blocked it. So the question that I have is, is impeachment actually a tool worth anything at all? It feels like whoever is not in power is holding up that moral principle of doing what is right and uh, um, trying to prove the rule of law and whoever is in power well gives a shit about the rule of law and the moral if uh, in order to stay in power this is this is what we see playing out right now and this is what we saw back then with clinton you could even go as far as say maybe nixon was the one that actually had a a, a, a rest of moral in him when he basically said i'm stepping back because who knows if he would have been impeached I, I mean, it's now our reading today that he was uh, he was about to be impeached, but who knows? Maybe he just did what was right um, since he was like a, a, a lifelong public servant and uh, felt this debate is over and he felt he lost the debate. I don't know, but it, it surely doesn't feel like a very useful tool right now. It's, it's basically a political fight that is unplaying in front of us. Yes, you have a, you have a good point. And indeed, I worry that it's basically where whomever is in power or not in power and just using this for their political purposes. So let's see how this plays out because it's happening right now. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? How will it play out? Well, I, th I think it's pretty much of a given, no? Like the Senate will reject the impeachment articles and he will not be impe impeached. It will change nothing to public perception. Because I think minds are set, so I think it's, it's going to change nothing. But what the Democrats have done here, I think, is they try to play a political, political card, which did not yield any results, and at the same time, you know, marked their ground by saying this is not acceptable. But honestly, it doesn't change anything. And I do think it's unacceptable, by the way, just on record. I think a lot of things Trump did were making him actually not electable but in the role of a president he committed a number of things by now that are not not a little they are hugely unacceptable but it's like well who am i to judge all right that was it let's go close this up then well as usual we thank our listeners for sticking with us and to ask them to stay tuned for another debate coming up soon because we keep recording. Yes. Thank you, and bye-bye. Thank Thanks, Sebastian.